This is the point of view. It's your favorite current affairs show on television. On the point of view, we get the right guests. We ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show. That means you can contribute to it. If you're watching on television, have a WhatsApp number on the screen. Let's know what you think of our topic. And of course, if you're watching on Facebook, there's a stream that you can comment on. So on the 17th of December, Ghanaians are going to vote. But do they even know what they'll be voting about and what the implications of their vote will be? I have two men who have slightly different views on this matter. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned. So on Tuesday, 17 December 2019, Ghanaians will go to the poll. They will do unit committee elections. They will also have their judicial assembly elections. But there's also a referendum, and that referendum is to accept or reject political party participation in district-level elections. What does that really mean? And how will that change governance in this country? Some people say it will deal with the winner-takes-all syndrome. Others say it will now politicize the last vanguard of what we have in terms of development. I have two men who have slightly different views on this. So Dr. Odro Sain is strongly for the vote. He says, vote yes. Let politicians infiltrate the local governance too, so that now everywhere is NDC, MPP. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bernard. Tony Obo is a development facilitator. He's not so sure it's a great idea to allow this to happen in the current state. If he would support, yes, a lot of things must change. So for now, he's voting no. Tony, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Bernard. Brilliant. Now, the president wants us to vote yes. He was in the voter region yesterday and today. This is what he told the people in the region about what to vote for on the 17th. One years ago, Jerry John Rawlings created the District Assembly. It was a very important initiative of his government, and it has helped improve the governance of our country and brought a lot of participation of local people in their government. But the time has come to take this another step forward to bring democracy even stronger to our localities. And that is what the referendum on the 17th of December is about. To give the people of Aplao the right to choose their own district chief executive and not to hear people say, oh, this man the president has brought us, we don't like him, we don't know him. Now you are going to choose for yourself the person you want as your district chief, as your municipal chief executive. The power is in me to, to choose the district or municipal chief executive. I'm saying I am giving the power to you, the people of Aflao, for you to make the choice. So the president says the power is yours. He's going to give you the power to choose. It's quite determined to do that. But let's go to the genesis. Uh, Doc, so what's really going on? 17th of December referendum. Give me some five-minute lecture on why we need to do this and why the president says we should vote yes. Thank you very much, Bernard. Um, let me start by saying that election of chief executives mm -hmm. is different from democratizing the local government system. There are two separate things. Election of MMDCs is governed by a different article under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Democratizing our local government system is also different. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen on the 17th of December is democratizing the local government system through multi-partisan elections. Election of MMDCs is governed by Article 2431 of the Constitution. Going into 2016, most of the political parties promised Ghanaians that when they win elections, they are going to elect chief executive. Nobody in Ghana questioned whether they were going to elect the chief executive on partisan or non-partisan basis. PPP, NDC, NPP all promised that they were going to elect chief executive. Fast forward. NPP won. Then NPP started implementing the process of electing chief executive. And the first process is, gets Article 2431, which gives the power to appoint chief executive to the president, amended. That particular article it's not an entrenched provision. So therefore, you need to test majority of members of parliament to approve it, and that will be carried. So the erroneous impression I want to clarify using this, your platform is that on 17 December, we are not electing chief executive. 
The election of chief executive, that article or the amendment bill, is already in parliament. Mm -hmm. It lies in the bosom of parliament to decide on whether we would elect chief executives or not. By they deciding to approve the current bill before them or not. So whether citizens vote yes or no on the 17th of December, if parliament approves 243, chief executives will be elected. Good. Two, whilst this bill goes to parliament, and parliament, in their own wisdom, thinks that they would have to approve it, then we are there. But let me also mention that under the Constitution, to approve Article 243, we need two-thirds majority of all the members of parliament to approve that bill. None of the two political parties commands the two-thirds majority. So we need a bipartisan consensus on the matter. Thankfully, both NDC and NPP promised they were going to elect chief executive. Yeah. So this is the decision point. Good. If you really meant what you were going to do, then the two parties should join forces to amend 243. That is the other one. Now, why 55-3? 55-3 is meant to democratize the local government system by introducing multi-partisan elections at the local government level. Why that? When you look at Article 55, Clause 3, it is saying that political parties can participate in all public elections except yes. the local government elections. Question then is, if we are going to elect chief executives, do we allow this to exist or we convert it into a bipartisan or a multipartisan system to allow that system to be in consonance with the national level system. That is the decision point we are now. At the moment, mm -hmm. the local government system is one party, is dominated by one party. Why am I saying that? A ruling party appoints chief executive. That same ruling party appoints one third of the members of the assembly. And we all know we shouldn't play ostrich. That for the assembly membership, there are political parties are, are be behind them. So you realize that if a party is in opposition, that party's participation in local government is illegal. But if the party is in power, that party's participation in local government system is legal. Why do we play that ostrich? We think the local government system is very undemocratic. So then, if we want it to be very consistent with the national level, we want to make sure that local democracy exists, then let us go there and then amend it. So once we amend it, Chief executives will be elected, MPs will be elected, presidents will be elected by the same people. Why do we say that people, citizens can elect president, the number one gentleman of the land, on a partisan basis, to manage all our big and large resources? Why do we think citizens can appoint or elect MPs? Who goes to parliament to make laws for us? But the same people cannot elect the chief executive. So basically, that is what is happening. And this has come about as a result of a review of our decentralization system after 31 years. After 31 years, it was realized that that system where president would appoint chief executive to be imposed on a seemingly nonpartisan institution is undemocratic, and it was inherited under the PNDC because we, tra we transferred the system from PNDC to a democratic system. So, uh, Bernard, this is where we are. We want consistency, and we think that we should democratize the local government system by preventing one party from dominating and also grow smaller political parties. Let me add this point. You see, from the way we are going, if we don't allow multi-partisan system at the local government level, we are killing the smaller political parties. We have over 19 political parties in this country. Because of the way our politics is at the national level, some of them may never get candidates to parliament. Some of them may never win the presidential seat. Mm. Now, because of that, they are dying. Now, it is virtually two-party state, even though the pro Constitution prohibits that. So why don't we use the local government elections as training grounds to prepare them? Even if they are not able to win any seat in parliament, they can win one assembly or two and use that place as training ground so we'll be able to have a democracy flourishing so that these smaller political parties can also be seen to be in business. Well, well argued. Uh, well, let's come to Mr. Dobie. What's your problem? 
My problem is very simple. I think when you go and read the um, presentations that were made at the Constitutional Review, before the Constitutional Review Commission, I think Ghanaians are for the election of uh, uh, DCs. There's no doubt about that. But why are Ghanaians hesitant about the introduction of political party at that level? Okay. We all can see the havoc that partisan political party is doing in Ghana. Okay. Why is that not the case in other countries? Okay. We have, we have political parties in, in Britain. We have political parties in the, in the, in the, in the, in, in the US, in various countries in Europe. Okay. But there are checks and balances. Okay, there are checks and balances. At the moment, the checks and balances in our situation is not working. Okay, we have a law that basically says, look, uh, 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 political parties are tw uh, uh, 2,000. Parties are supposed to file audited accounts. Okay, there are so many things they are supposed to do so that there is some control and check where did they get their funding from? Where did they do this and so on? All this we are not enforcing. Okay? We are not enforcing. And, and, and then, and so there's impunity going on. And basically, apart from that, just as my brother said that uh, the uh, uh, decentralized system was inherited from the PNDC time, it's the same way our constitution was inherited from PNDC, from a military regime transitioning into uh, 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 um, uh, a democratic regime. And so the, the, the military regime wanted to hold on to all the powers. Okay, so the checks and balances on the president is weak. So at the moment, and the president is elected on a partisan base, on the uh, which party ever wins. Okay, and so there's a state capture by the ruling political party. Okay, and this is the challenge we're having at the moment, where Basically, the ruling political party determines with the president, okay, appointment of people to almost every uh, 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 mm. uh, nooks and crony of the, of the state. Okay, and we then also, uh, as what I've been pointing out, the political parties, the ruling political parties, anytime they come in power, uh, 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 appoint their own foot soldiers into so many other uh, 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 state institutions. So there's a hijack, a capture of the various state institutions. Okay. Now, the review, some of the recommendations from the review is that, look, the president yes, should be able to appoint certain uh, 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 people to certain positions. But then at least the independent constitutional bodies, which are supposed to serve some, provide some checks and balances, okay, should not be appointed by the president. Okay. In fact, it also makes provision for an independent emolument commission so that the presidency does not starve these institutions of funding. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at what is going on now, even with the Auditor General. The Auditor General is basically, this one has been forceful and saying, look, I'm going to enforce the, the rules. And says, Senior Minister, sorry, you didn't do something right. Okay, now we have AFAG. We all know AFAG is pro NPP. Okay, they started fighting this guy. Okay, just as they removed the Electoral Commission. Uh, commissioner. I won't be surprised, the chair of the electoral commission, I won't be surprised if they do the same with the auditor general. So we have a situation where the parties have captured all the space. And we are saying, if we don't reform this to then move that kind of system to the local level, it's going to create a, a, a mess. We have at that local level, we have chiefs. Okay, up to now, we are still not clear about the powers that we've given the chiefs. Galamse, who are those Fronting Galamse. A lot of people tell you the parties, the ruling parties, and it's just a matter of moving one to another. So, can you imagine what is going to happen when we now formalize political parties' participation at that level? I don't we know they do it, they sponsor, uh, so, but then they don't have that boldness to come out. So, we are simply saying that Ghanaians must vote no and tell the president and his team to go and do the necessary total review of the constitution, bring in the checks and balances, okay, then we will feel comfortable to let the political parties operate at that level. If not, we are adding uh, 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 fuel to fire. So if I understand you, you are for 243 being amended for us to vote for our MMDCs. Yes. But that voting doesn't have to be done on political party lines. 
So Parliament can go ahead and amend that. Definitely. And you are happy with that. Definitely. But on de December 17, we should vote no. Yes. We don't, you don't want political parties to be involved in any level of the district assembly election. Not at this time. The way the, uh, the way the political parties are functioning in Ghana. Okay. So I'm saying if after the constitutional review is implemented and we at least check some of the powers of the uh, 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 president, okay, then we can now move to that level so of consideration. So which aspect of the constitutional review needs to be, um, to be implemented for you to be convinced that we are ready to bring politics into local governance and elections? To bring parties, parties. To, to that yes, level. Yes, political parties. Yes. One is, at least, even if we can, this issue of the president not uh, appointing the independent constitutional bodies. Because, for instance, let's take Shiraj. Okay, if Shiraj is not appointed by the president, okay, and, and there are human rights abuses at the local level, okay, you now know that the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the head of Shiraj is totally independent, okay, of the, of the party, of the ruling party, okay. So at least there's some faith and confidence, okay. So it's curbing those checks and balances. Again, if we take the electoral commission, okay, it's the, the, the members are appointed or the chair is appointed by the president. This is supposed to be the referee, okay. This is supposed to be the referee. Then you have the uh, 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 attorney general. Okay, you have the attorney general. Then you have this situation where the president can still appoint uh, 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 ministers from parliament. So you have a situation where, let's take for instance, uh, 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 um, education is not decentralized, it's not under the local government. Health mm. is not under local government. Then you have a minister appointed from parliament who is. And so not until we create some of these imbalances. So you, the first issue is the president's power. The president's power. I see. And also creating the checks and balances that, so that parliament can hold the president accountable. At the moment, we have a diluted uh, parliament, a rubber stamp parliament. Okay, because majority of the ministers are appointed from parliament. But if that's your only problem, then he will say, well, the president wants to volunteer and reduce his own power. That's why he says vote for your MMDC. That's what he's saying. But we are saying that, yes, we want to vote for our MMDC. I mean, like he's explained, like Doc has explained, the Constitution allows that to happen. It doesn't need us to go to a referendum. But it's the political party's involvement that you don't like. What will partisanship do to local governance? I'm saying that at the moment, the way we are operating the party politics in this country is too chaotic. Too chaotic? Too chaotic. It's uncontrolled because uh, 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 the rules are not being followed. Okay, the rules are not being followed because the electoral commission that is supposed to enforce the rules when it comes to some of the uh, 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 the accounts, their sub audited accounts, uh, uh, where contributions are coming from, uh, to uh, be able to um, yes give the accounts six months from thirty first December of each year. We've not seen that happening. Okay, then. Um, so for me, I think it's, uh, there's a climate of unproductive, destructive, okay, uh, 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 nation-wrecking partisan going on. Okay, and we all feel it, we all see it. And sometimes people feel even intimidated to talk. Okay, we all see what happens after elections. <laughs> okay, and I'm, I'm just picturing, can you imagine change of elections uh, this, at local government level? So I'll, parties... come, I'll come back to you on some of the pros, but okay. look, let's just talk about this. You know that there's a lot of opacity in the way candidates are selected. They do primaries. A few people go as a delegate, choose somebody to represent the party. There's a lot of money involved in choosing delegates. Some people feel that by opening the floodgates by voting, yes, you're going to legitimize that. So even for unit committee membership, for all the various levels of local governance, you're going to have this craziness infiltrate to that level. I mean, how are you going to prevent that if we vote yes? Thank you very much, um, Bernard. Bernard, I think that argument is flawed in a way. Um, if we have not been able to contain it at the national level, why do we think we will be able to contain it at the local government level? We have not been bold to abolish partisan politics at the national level. 
Why do we think we can abolish it at the local government level? Indeed, the voting for MMDCs and voting to amend 55-3 is a way of reducing corruption. Are you serious? Either too, Bernard, president no, appoints... But you are conflating the two. No. You see, we, are, we, are not, we agree that we, sh we, we can vote for our MMDC. Yes. He doesn't have to come on NDC or MPP ticket. That's we are right. saying that the involvement of NDC, MPP or it's PPP is what brings the problem. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm developing mm -hmm. the point okay. that when we amend 55-3, we've opened up the system. It's not only for political parties. CSOs can sponsor candidates. Faith-based organizations can sponsor candidates. PWDs can sponsor candidates. We've opened up the system. At the moment, wow. at the moment, the system is closed. It is only the president that can appoint a chief executive. You can have very good civil society organizations. They may want to sponsor candidates. They may want to put themselves up to become chief executives to bring development. Now the constitution debarred them from doing that. How? No, they can't. The, the I don't get it. Uh, no, you are confused. No, me. let yeah. me. Two, four, three. It's for election. Yes. And then 55 3. Yeah. Once you amend 55 3, mm. and it is a yes. 55 3 only precludes political, political parties. parties. It doesn't preclude anybody but else. Yes. Good. So, Sunday. for example, now, yes. on December 17, people are going for unit committee elections. That's right. What prevents CDD from sponsoring somebody to do unit committee CDD, elections? CDD cannot sponsor somebody to do It is not a partisan unit. election. It is no. not a partisan yes. election. So, anybody can stand. Exactly. That's right. So, you are, you are solving a problem that doesn't exist. No, it, it exists. I'm trying to connect it to the election of MMDCs because it is the election of MMDC that triggered 55 3. Yes, but the constitution only prevents political parties. parties. That, it doesn't prevent anybody else. That, that I'm not arguing with, I'm not arguing with you yes. on that. But what I'm saying is that what triggered 55, the amendment of 55 3? It's an election of MMDCs. It, no, it's a, no, no, it's no. a hidden... It's, you, you are the one bringing that confusion. That's right. Yes. We can vote for our MMDCs yes. Yes. without they being sponsored by any party. party. We are asking us... So, to as, as until now, yes. the, the, there's a guy called Kina. Yes. He's my assemblyman for Adabraka. The, he's the assemblyman. I don't man. know what party he belongs to. That's fine. I vote here. So yes. when we vote and he becomes... Uh, uh, I think he's the assemblyman. Assemblyman, yeah. yes. It doesn't prevent us from voting for him. It doesn't. So at all. You, you are you are curing a problem that doesn't exist. No, it exists. By, in, by bringing political parties in, no, you are now going to say that Kina, who is a friend to both NDC and MPP in Adabraka, should now pick a political party. Otherwise, he can't be assemblyman. Let me say, let me streamline the argument now. What we are saying is that we want consistency in governance. National level politicians or national level leaders are elected on partisan basis. Local government leaders must be elected on partisan basis. That is pure and simple. But we have a country which, I mean, look, once you win an election as a president, That's right. your duty is to unify the country. That's right. So if you say the fact that we've appointed a, elected a president on a partisan basis, doesn't That's mean right. that the person who is at local level needs to be on a party ticket. No. Because he's pushing a national agenda. He's not pushing a party that agenda. That is the inconsistency in our system. Creating that is, which problem? That is very inconsistent. Popular because you know, no, you at the local. We are talking about local democracy here. Mm -hmm. These same people yes. who elected the president on partisan basis. But how does involvement mm -hmm. of politics, polit political parties, make it democracy? Good the voting is participation of the public. It is. So if I vote for Kina, mm -hmm. for Adabraka, the fact that he's not on a party ticket doesn't mean he's not democratic. It's not democratic. So you are conflating democracy with no, politics. No, 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 no. But democracy cannot thrive without political parties. No, no, no. Who says no? No, who says no? Who created? No, 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 no. No, wait, wait. Democracy and political parties were they created at the same time? They were not created at the same time. But with political parties' involvement, it improved participation. On based on all research. No, look at local government elections. Political parties have hijacked democracy. No, no, democracy has not hijacked it. What is democracy? No, no. Excuse me. I think I think let's let's no no. Don't let us confuse. Which, which is which is used that confusing now? Please, democracy please. Democracy no, party, please, please, no, because you, you don't, don't need political ever, parties please. for democracy. For democracy you, to you, say you need political parties to improve participation. That's right. Based on all research. That no, look wrong. at the local government elections. That Without wrong. political parties' participation, no. we've never crossed forty no, percent. That, that, is there a causality? No, hold on, Tony. Yes. Yeah. The fact that people don't turn up to vote yes. at local government elections cannot be. You don't have any scientific proof that is because political parties are not involved. Look at the national level elections. We have mm -hmm. hit, we have gone up to about seventy percent of participation because of the involvement of political but parties. But the opposite is not true. You no, can't be that no, I disagree. Can, can, I, can, I, can I also? I disagree. I think, no, it's my point is this. I, I if disagree. You're saying say that there's poor participation. Yes. At local government, there are a number of factors. Why? There, there are a number of yes. factors. So let me give you yes. one. 
Look, I think people want to vote for the DCs. Okay, people want to vote for DCs. No, give us the reason why no. there's poor participation no, before you go to the, the voting no, for the DCs. No, I'm saying one of the poor DCs yes. is because people don't have the chance to vote for the DC. This is the political hedge. But why should Accra or the president be the one to uh, 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 appoint that person for That us? I agree with you. Okay, so people have been agitating that we want to vote our own DCs and MMCs. Okay. Okay, people have been agitating for That's that. That's right. Okay, and so why don't we try that and see whether that won't improve participation the Senate, before you look at the political Before we then go to that point of uh, 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 saying that because of low participation. So I, I, I think that has been tested. I think the point you're making about yes. uh, democracy and yeah. politics, party, again, yeah. I, I, party I think politics it's, it's not, a very no. difficult point for us to accept because democracy based on how the Greeks founded it mm. and the way it's, it's the participation of different groups. That's right. It doesn't require political now, how do you mobilize to these functions? groups to participate? How do you mobilize people to That's go to church on Sunday? How, how, how do you mobilize people to go to stadium on no, Sunday? No, 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 no. Stadium and church, you no, have different no, groups. No, but you have mobilization. Yes. So are you saying that political parties are They the mobilize only... the people to participate. Because that's we, the only ones we've allowed to do it. I, what's, what's the evidence mm. that other people can mobilize people? No, no, but what's the evidence that they have when, mobilized when looks When Nooks goes to the streets, the political party that puts them there. It is the When you were in Legon, didn't you go on the streets? No, I went. I, you mean, well, I, the political party, party put you there? I was mobilized by my SRC. I was mobilized by my SRC. political party. party. I, I was mobilized. That's why I'm, I'm saying that we need a group. We need yeah, a, you see, a, a team to mobilize them. SRC is campus politics. But it's not a political ah, party. So that is the institution... That mobilizes people no. to participate in campus yeah, politics. See, that's what I'm saying. I see, so the fact that I am supporting Poison to be JCR president, and he is a campus politician, doesn't mean I need a political party to mobilize people. Poison has his group. You are a member yeah, of Poison's you, group. You, know, you don't need uh, to be a, no, 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 you know, a political party to mobilize. So then we should no. abolish it at the national no, level. That's not, that's no, no, not that's that's what we're saying. Saying. No, no, that's what we're if we saying. think it's not good, political parties no, are even, irrelevant in democracy. No, no, abolish it no, at the national level. Let's throw that to Ghanaians and see. Because that is it. We are not seeing the dividend of democracy because of the chaotic nature of the partisan political parties we are playing at this moment. Okay, and Ghanaians are fed up. How chaotic? What is the chaotic situation? After elections, look at what happens. Look at the vigilante going on. Look at even pressure groups. There are party-sponsored pressure groups. Okay, and they've taken their space. It's true. They're able to uh, uh, mobilize because they have, they have captured the state. They're able to have uh, access to state resources. They appoint, uh, well, the president appoints the uh, party person to GNPC, okay, and, 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 and then they have the resources to now... Is it unconstitutional? You know, no, I'm not saying... I'm saying that's what we're saying. We should review the constitution. So we should... You see, we so, should review the constitution. So, so then we should time. blame ourselves if the whole executive chapter of the constitution is entrenched. Okay. You leave the you you leave the uh, MP section, you leave the judiciary section to some non entrenched, and the whole executive is entrenched. Who do yes. you blame? So so we, blame we are ourselves. saying no. So we are saying a former president, the late uh, 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 Atamils. Okay, and even it started before him. The African peer review. Uh, 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 mission, mechanism. mechanism told us clearly that we needed to review our constitution. Okay, uh, uh, President. I, mean, I, I disagree with the review. Okay. I think we should rewrite the constitution. Ah, then, then, then let's then fine. That's where we should even go. So do you abolish the current one before you rewrite the new one? Or okay, you... but what we no, are like, how, how, do, how to... do you get a new constitution? Do you suspend the old one? It will be difficult. It's, 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 so it. isn't it better to review than to rewrite? No, but if you are reviewing, you are reviewing over seventy percent of, yeah, of the current I constitution mean, at, at the moment, and that is what is what is making it difficult. But you, have, you can, pre you can yes. present portions for people to vote on. Bernard, if you are no. going for a referendum, you know the number of uh, entrenched provisions that have been recommended for amendment. About, uh, and um, about how many? And every uh, referendum should come with one referendum question. Yes. So what it means is that we're going to ask a number of questions over a period of time. We'll yes. take a break. But, we'll take a break. This is the point of view. We're trying to know what to vote for. So far, I'm not convinced. I, I, so I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm confused. And I'm, I'm trying to make a decision. Tony's arguments are not very strong. Neither are your arguments, honestly. Both of you need to improve your argument. How are we voting on 17th of December? Are we voting yes or no? Do you know what a vote means? I have a lot of comments and we have some new arguments. If people have written articles about why they support one position or the other, I'll put some of them up when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the point of view. So uh, let's read some of your comments. Good evening, Bernard and the panel. The education on the upcoming referendum is so low. NCC, EC, Information Ministry are doing a lot of disservice to citizens. This is Senor from Takradi. Voting will not solve our problem. Financing the MMDCs and building the institution with strong char 
ties within the MMDA is the only way from Joe Iron City. Bernard, if assembly members are elected on political lines, development will be skewed against opposition members. These assembly members have no common fund, as in the case of MPs, who, despite the fact that they may be in opposition MPs, will this not affect development in opposition represented electoral areas? Thomas, are you selfie in NG? may want to address this. Uh, Mr. Avle, why is it that a minister can also be an MP? I thought Parliament is supposed to be independent of the executive branch of government. A DC or MC appointed by a president would definitely do the bidding of his president or the president. But I support voting for MMDCs, but not on political party lines. This will exclude, this will exclude capable and qualified people who would not want to be part of politics from contributing their skill and knowledge to their localities. I'm not sure, but I think mayors in some jurisdictions are not based on party politics, even though they are voted for. Everything has merit and demerit, but we have seen how party politics has become dirty in this country. Please, let's shy away from it. So, um, I'm coming back to you. Oh. There, I think there was a question for you. The assembly members come on fund. Yes, so they are worried that if the, if the assembly member's party loses, he may not have any resources and he will feel excluded. I don't know whether that's something you want to comment yeah, that's, that, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, every district assembly develops what you call um, a district development plan. And a district development plan is based on the electoral areas. So every electoral area is entitled to one development or the other. Funds that goes to the assembly, especially the common fund, is an entitlement fund. Okay. So what about the question that you are going to deny people who are not in political parties the chance to take part in governance? Because as we speak now, I'm, I'm not on a political party. I don't have a political party card. I can stand for local government election. That's right. If I don't feel convinced by any political party, I'll be disadvantaged if you open up the system like that, would no, you? Independent candidates are allowed. How many independent candidates are allowed in elections in Ghana? No, that is, that is at the, at the MP, MP level, at the local How government level. How many independent level. candidates do you have in parliament? Well, that's what I'm saying. That, that is why we are not able to get there. But if you come to the local government level, if you have a philanthropist who is very good, it should be possible to yeah. win the seat. So you don't exclude? No, let me read, let me read uh, my friend Samson's take that's right. on this. He says, what it means to vote... A dangerous yes on December 17. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something says, a yes vote on December 17, 2019 does not make elective what is already elective. What it does, in fact, is to make legal what the Constitution prohibits. The law is that political parties are prohibited from sponsoring candidates for elections at the district assembly and lower local government units. This position was very important to the framers of the Constitution, so they locked it down in Article 290 and Trent Provision. It is therefore very difficult to amend a bill. It is therefore difficult to amend, and a bill to amend this position must first be referred to the Council of State by the Speaker of Parliament for their advice within 30 days of receiving it. The bill must thereafter be published in the Gazette for the attention of citizens for half a year. Parliament is still not allowed to pass it unless 75% of, at least 40% of eligible voters turn out in a referendum to approve it or vote yes. This is how serious citizens collectively, through a consultative process, and a constituent assembly framed and took this law at the birth of the Fourth Republic, Ghana, after many failed attempts at nurturing a democracy. The prohibition, among others, was to avoid the very danger now being pushed without deep thought and for parochial self-serving ends by the governing MPP with the tacit support of the opposition NDC, complete partisan control of state power and the capture of democracy even at the most basic level of the governance structure. The debate and ideal for society over the decades has been for their heads local level reps of central government to be directly accountable to the local people for their holistic development and not for them to have first loyalties to be accountable to political parties. The undesired outcome sought to be avoided is what MPs have most unfortunately become serving parochial political party lines even to the detriment of the Ghana agenda. The evidence is clear that the NDC MPP duopoly has delayed the forward march of this country so much that this loan and aid dependent republic isn't ashamed it is unable to account for $3 billion. <laughs> And it might just soon go cap in hand to peers at, in, at impedance. We do not need an university professor to explain why so-called affordable housing construction commenced by President Kufo was not continued by his predecessors. Let me go to his conclusion. I don't read in Article 55 or Chapter 20 or anywhere in the Constitution that there are no elections at the District Assembly and lower level government units. It is really only the political heads, CEOs at the district, towns and cities who are appointed. But even that subject to approval by two thirds majority can change. Then he concludes the president appoints only up to 30% of the members. The current structure, like any other system within the state, has its problems, especially as, as destructive partisan 
infiltrate it. But it can be improved to function more effectively without having to bring political parties in. This is a major argument. It's a long article. I don't have time to read all of it. I'm sure you say you disagree with him. Definitely, I do. <laughs> well, I, and I agree with him. You agree with him? He would agree no, with I, I, with I, I, no, but I, I, I see, strongly disagree. The with point him. we came to, mm. I think we're converging. That's mm. right. Okay, that, look, there's a need for a review of the Constitution. But he says he would even rather rewrite. Uh, rewrite. Yeah, we have to rewrite okay. the Constitution. And this is our argument that, look, there is need for certain conditions mm. to be in place. Okay, if we introduce, if we are to introduce partisan politics at that level, even at the national level, okay, and we're saying these conditions are, there must be the checks and balances, okay. There must be a certain level of independence of the various constitutional bodies, okay. So, and there must be a curtailment of the powers of the president. But okay. there's, a, there's a view that one of the advantages of what they are proposing mm -hmm. is the winner-takes-all system that we want to change. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. opposition parties have no role in governance. I so agree. their point is that if you allow for voting on partisan line, if you look at the out 10 of the December 2016 elections, the opposition party could win about 40 something percent yeah. of districts. That means that even though there's an MPP government, there could be NDC administration okay. in certain districts. Which means that they don't spend four years just trying to pull the government down. They also have four years to govern. And I think that's a strong point that they've been making about why if you bring partisan politics into local governance, it removes the so-called winner-takes-all system. I don't yes. know if you've considered that. Yes, no, I have, I have. I have. And that's why I'm saying that. For some of us who are saying at this point in time, we should vote no. Okay. It's not because we don't believe that uh, 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 introducing party politics at that level will improve governance and all this. We, it has its pros. But we're saying that at the moment, the prerequisite conditions, okay, that will allow those checks and balances to happen, okay, it's not, it's not there. So we'd rather be transporting the chaos we are experiencing now, okay, at national level and entrenching it further at the local level. So, so we are you're saying, saying that, that if our politics was properly done, if, you would have had no problem with this. I would but have because of the way, the experience you have with our politics. Our, our partisan politics. Our partisan politics. Okay. The arrangement, the constitutional arrangement of our parties. And even the laws we have, we have, we have uh, 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 enacted from the constitution, uh, 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 Political Parties Act 2000. We are not following it. We are not enforcing it. So there is just impunity at the moment. Okay. And if you dare speak, it's easy for the political parties to take you out because they are better organized, okay. And at the moment, it looks like, yes, once there's election, the winner wants to take everything. And I agree. If we do, if we do have uh, uh, political parties participating at that level, in a in a in a in a, in a sane environment, okay, okay, as you have it in other countries, okay, if you have that, then it will work. But in our Present situation, look, some of us lived through the period of the P, uh, 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 People's Defense Com uh, uh, Committees. Mm -hmm. Okay, when that was introduced at the local level, some chiefs had to run away. Okay, some chiefs had to run away because they felt they had the power and the chief had to go to what they say. You know, and so for me, that, 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 that is my fear. Okay, why not? Yeah, I think um, uh, this argument. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like the argument we made between UGCC and CPP UGCC. Uh, when we were transiting from a colonial administration to an independent state. UGCC group said uh, independence within the shortest possible time. Yeah. <laughs> CPP said independence <laughs> now. Yeah. If we were to wait for Ghana to develop up to a certain mm -hmm. level before the British granted us our independence, we wouldn't have developed. So my point is let us move into the system. Let us democratize it. Let us improve checks and balances. In, indeed. Bernard, um, you see, our opposition political parties continue to oppose every single policy of government because we give them the name opposition. <laughs> in other jurisdictions, they yeah. may be called alternative governments. Yes. In that case, you come up with constructive criticism, with suggestion, because you know it will be your turn one day. Now, if you don't have such checks in the system by giving them the opportunity to also 
have some local government to manage. They will be in opposition for four years. And it's difficult to be in opposition. Opposition is hard. It is hard. It's a hell. Is, so, it be, is it because our politics is, might tend to chop politics? Exactly. No, no, I mean... I mean if so, you are not in power, you don't have anything to do. The, the, I mean, well, you, you, are, you have something to do, but what is, it, what is your stake in governance when you are in opposition? So that if we introduce that at the local government system, it is likely NDC can win some of the seats in the Volta region. NPP can win some of the seats in the Ashanti region. Depending on which party is in power, they will put them in check. And then also, let me mention that if you have an opposition chief executive elected on an opposition political party ticket, and we have a ruling party government in power, you think Common Fund will delay and he will sit down? <laughs> you think he will allow deductions at source at the center? He has promised people he will bring development. He will leak it out to his party. They will start making noise. But what about the fact that the DC now becomes beholden to the party chairman? So there's an example somebody gave on a platform. He says, so a, a, a party chairman builds in a waterway. A DC goes to pull it down. The party chairman threatens to remove the DC because he brought him in. You get my point? So the, the, And you know that the way when parties win power, these <laughs> party executives and things become very powerful. So now you have a DC who's supposed to represent Adenta, but there's a party chairman somewhere who's now controlling him. And a lot of these people are not accountable to the people. Yeah, but Bernard, you see, once you do that, you have put your political fortune on the, on, on the ladder. Because what is going to happen is that if you cotton to that party chairman, next four years, you are out of office. And now when somebody chops money, all the MPP people in the area will say, well, he's our man, so we can't... So now, no. when we are talking about even mismanaging local money, all they put in one party who support the guy will say, if we go against this guy, we are bringing our party down. So the national politics we play when it comes to corruption at the national level, we import it to the local level. But, so now there's so mismanagement of funds. Then they will say, well, it's our party, so you can't go against your party. But if we have public procurement laws, we have the public financial management act, we have the criminal, act, uh, uh, criminal code there. A crime is a crime, irrespective of where you belong to. You see? So the checks and balances would be there. But they will hide so, behind their parties. No, but because they, they can't be prosecuted. But yes. you see, once, once, you see, one of the reasons we don't, we don't do corruption, now. once you, 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 you say we are being prosecuted because of our party ticket, you rally the troops. So now, even national level corruption is politicized. Right? Yes. So you are going to import that to the local level. Somebody's mismanaged common fund. They say, ah, it's our party, we are NDC. So if we go against him, we are fighting our own fortunes on the ground. So we are saying it's the, the other people who are attacking us. Whereas at the local level now, if you go to a community and there's no water, there's no power. Most, I mean, look, let me give you an example. The Adenta protest over uh, the, the food show, bridges. Yeah. I know people in NPP and NDC who are all part of that thing. That's right. It wasn't pushed by one political party. Imagine if now you have politics at that level. That's right. You're going to have... It's going to be difficult to even rally all the people to do that kind of thing any, anymore. It's, it's because difficult. now, it's if you are against, it means you are in opposition. Yeah. If you are for, it means you are in power. Even, so it, it, even, even when the food breach is Bernard. killing people, yeah. I don't think Ghanaians no, will do that. No, Bernard, 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 you see, for me, I'm saying that okay. it's working in other countries. That's right. Why is it not working here? Political parties are working yes. and delivering. And mayors the, are and, and elected and, and delivering, on partisan yes, basis and delivering, in other countries. And delivering, and delivering the fruits of democracy to people. Okay. Yeah, it's not working because the president is the one who's appointed the uh, 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 attorney general and the minister for justice. Okay, it's the same person who's appointed uh, the, the commissioner for Shraj. Okay, it's the same person who has appointed all these people. Some competent, some incompetent. So you see the two political parties accusing each other of incompetence. <laughs> okay, and we say, look, let us correct that. If somebody, that, like you are saying, crime should not have party, but at the they have. Because it's the president that is appointing IGP. <laughs> okay? So, not until we check these, uh, these issues and create the checks and balances, people will feel even more insecure at the local level. Okay? And for me, I don't agree with this analogy of UGCC and UCC. That yeah. is CPP. Uh, 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 sorry, C CPP. Uh, UGC and CPP. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. The reason why I'm saying that is that, look, the process for constitutional review has been initiated. Mm. Okay. It, I, I think that if uh, 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 the president wanted to continue what Atamils had done, it shouldn't take one year or so to uh, 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 prioritize some of those entrenched clauses and put it to a referendum. Why, why the white okay. paper? Why the white paper? Yes. Then? So look, so, uh, what, so, so, the, so even the white paper watered down some of these things. It's watered yes. down. So why, 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 that? So why that? President... Uh, 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 His Excellency uh, 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 Nana Akufuado, 
could have revisited that whole review. Okay, and then either come to the conclusion that we need to rewrite the constitution. It, or, ha it has a constitutional implication. Exactly, we know. So let's have a conversation around so that. So that is the but don't conversation rush, we need to Don't have. let us rush to then <laughs> bring this chaos we have because of the lacks of checks and uh, uh, controls and uh, checks and balances in our, at the national level to the local level. I'm receiving new submissions. I'm going to read some when you come back. We are still okay. talking about what to vote for on December 17. Are you voting yes or no? Let me know. Send us your comment. This is the point of view. Stay with us. The debate is still on. Point of view is looking at what to vote for. Are you voting yes or no on December 17? It's very clear there are two other things you are voting for. There will be unit committee elections, which will definitely, uh, at least for this last election, be non-partisan. That's right. And then digital assembly elections will be non-partisan. Just a quick point. So if we vote yes, it means that for the next round of unit committee elections, partisan. parties can appoint. That's right. And then district assembly. Can't we have a system where only the DC is sponsored by the party? Then the rest can still maintain their status quo. Because of the provision under Article 55.3, which is omnibus, yeah. it makes it omnibus. So in that case, once, so once you open the flag, once you open the flag, so even the unit committee members, the uni all of the unit committee assembly members and the chief executive. Wow. Yes. So. That is the consistency. But the opposition on. are already participating in government as MPs. Romeo from East Legon. Low patronage of local government elections has come as a result of centralized system where resources are determined by central government. This has rendered the assembly members useless mm -hmm. because they cannot solve any problems at the grassroots. And the resource allocation is fully decentralized. The standard of living for people continues to decline. I am totally against partisan involvement because not everyone wants to stand on a political party color. Ben, forget it. Quick, cool, bad, think of radio. Ben, and I think no is the way to go. Impunity is likely to be pushed to the local level. This is coming from Kwame Abuchi Akulao. Ben, and I think, okay, I just I, I read, let me read more. Good evening, Bernard. The press is not telling us the truth about the December 17 referendum. The power is not from president, rather, it's a result of the review of the reconstitution of Ghana. This is Kwame Pokwasi. And then uh, somebody said, Bernard, Dr. Audrey is an advisor to local government minister. How neutral can he be in a discussion on the referendum? Doc, you keep saying, some people keep saying that we are confusing the issues. But when you listen to the president in the voter region, he said people should vote yes because he wants to give power for people to choose their DCs. But that's a bit of, that's confusing. Yes. Because choosing DCs is clearly parliament's job. And you've explained eloquently how that exactly. would change. Voting yes is a completely okay. different thing. But in... And it's not the only one who does that. When you run through almost all the stories on this, let me, let me give you a few stories. So, mm. MMDC referendum, not voting is not an option. I deck to Ghanaians, Dr. Akwiti. Vote yes in referendum on election on is Akufuado. Kodio. Quite a number of civil society organizations are saying, vote yes. And they are saying, because we want you to choose your MMDC. That's wrong. Aren't we confusing? I mean, yes. you, you yes. know what I'm I think, I think um, it's, it it's because... Yeah. The election of MMDC is triggered the need to amend 55.3. That is mm. how can people are linking it to the election of MMDC. And right. to be fair to those who are making those statements, if we amend 55.3, the first position that will be affected by the partisan involvement of local of elections, local government level, is the election of MMDCs. The other question is: Should referendum have people choosing one side? Shouldn't the government be neutral? If you say you are doing a referendum. For example, when we did the constitutional review, I remember in 92, they started singing referendum, exercise of power. Why is the executive actively campaigning for a yes? The executive is guiding and encouraging people to vote yes. The executive is not imposing it on anybody to vote yes. So will that not, com uh, will that not compromise the outcome? Because if you're saying, and then the other point, CDD, uh, the Afro-Barometer 2017, That's right. on the question of partisan involvement, it was 50-50. That's right. So the populace is not very clear what they want. So should that not be why? And we are saying, oh, I need 40% turnout. 40% turnout. And that's 40%, 75%. The yes. CDC results says it was about 45-55. That's right. For and against. So is that a reason why government is pushing? That you are afraid that if you don't get people to vote yes, this thing will not go through? We're not afraid at all. What we are doing is encouraging people, explaining it to people, giving them the opportunity to make options. But we think that the best for Ghana is a yes vote. Now, if there's a vote no, will the president still allow parliament to go ahead to change 243 
so we can vote for MMDCs, even in the partisan lines? Very important question. If there is a no vote mm -hmm. and parliament approves 2431, yeah. it means chief executives will be elected, yeah. but on non partisan, -partisan basis. So, that's, so you, you, based on all you heard from the government, they've agreed to that. Because some people feel that if there's a, a no vote, it will be so injurious to the, the uh, executive that they may reverse everything. And say, no, it school. will be difficult with where the bill to uh, uh, amend Article 2431 two, is now. At the moment, it's in Parliament. What is left is for parliamentarians to vote on it. So if parliamentarians work their way out well, they may end up voting on it before we go for the December 17th referendum. Which may then give an impetus for those who want to either vote yes or no to make a decision. Certainly. So you're encouraging Parliament to let the process go through. We'll vote for MMDCs. Definitely. But on Tuesday, December 17th, no. I'm saying no, and many people are saying no, because we say let's put our house in order. Okay, let's put our political party operations in order. He, be he involve... believes in the yes, so but no, you know, the no, house no, no. Are you sure? Yes, yes. yes. No, I'm saying, look, uh, if it uh, means uh, delaying that process of yes to happen, okay, let's delay it. Okay, because we are already at a point where we can, we've gone through a review. We all acknowledge there are all kinds of challenges to the Constitution. Okay, Ghanaians want a clear uh, separation of powers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Parliament should be able to hold the executive accountable. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we don't have that. Okay. And it has led to state capture by the ruling political parties. You have to define what is meant by state capture. No, that's, I, I, that's what I'm saying. That's, mm -hmm. I think, you see, you see sometimes, I, I've always said, when people try to bring the evidence and so on, people experience things. But, but dog, we are you experiencing are a it. Are you saying you don't know what state capture means? No, no, I want him to no, explain so, so that he'll put it in context. State in capture, the context of no, introducing a partisan system in the local government. <laughs> <system. laughs> Bernard, it's sad that Ghanaians have not realized that voting for MMDCs on political party lines is not a panacea to the challenges of lack of development in their communities. As for corruption, the election of MMDCs is not a panacea, but going to promote more corruption. As a country, we simply are not ready to confront corruption and development head on. Instead, we decide to be saddled with the theory of election just as we did with the creation of more regions and constituencies. This whole exercise is a waste of resources and a certain approach to underdevelopment. Edward Carrewe in Adenta. Edward Carrewe works with Gao. Uh, Gao, yeah. yeah. I just got a, a representation from a group called Chalog, Chamber for Local Governance. Okay. A long one. P.O. Box SK333, Sakumono. <laughs> the local government system should still remain nonpartisan. Vote no to reject the proposal for amendment of Article 555.3. It's a long statement. Okay. But the conclusion is that it will increase corruption, number one. Um, it's very long. Number two, it will politicize development projects, number two. And number three, there will be a conflict between assembly members and unit committee members. That's their points. Number four, uh, it will, there will be a dip in revenue mobilization. And number five, there will be power play between opposition MMDCs and MMCDs. That's number five. Number six, political interference in the work of MMDCs and power play between them and MPs. And that's number six. Number seven, manifest implementation confusion. And then they have about six other questions which I don't have time to ask. And it's signed by Dr. Richard Fiadomo, Romeo Akahoho, Alaji Ibrahim Faila, Joshua Quist. And they are basically saying that this is a completely bad idea. We should throw it away. It's, it's not at all, Bernard. Um, you know, if we if we are able to elect MMDCs on partisan basis, it rather improve the relationship between MPs and MMDCs. At the moment, it is very it is very acrimonious, even if they are from the same political party. Mm. Because once an MMDC goes for the two terms, the natural progression is you want to become an MP. Then you hold on to the uh, MP share of the common fund. You refuse to release it to the MP. Mm. No, but once there is security of tenure and the MMDC knows that I've been elected, I've been given a four-year mandate, he will concentrate on developing the area. Okay. So that at least... He Thank you, be... Dr. Osai. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, um, Odru Osai oh, is uh, the Dean of Studies and Research at I, uh, LGS. LGS. And he's also an advisor on local governance to the government. Tony Lobo is a social development facilitator. Well, on voting for MMDCs, I support what Parliament is doing. On voting for political <laughs> parties to take part in local elections, I'm still not convinced. I wait for Dr. Akriti and the others to convince me. 
tomorrow on radio. Thank you for watching tonight's edition of the show. Stay with CTTV. Bye-bye.